What it do, my G? This is Glad Gaming with my review on Hood Outlaws and Legends. First things first, I've only played the Hunter class, so this perspective will mostly be from the perspective of a Hunter main going against the other classes. So with that being said, let's get it started. So the main question people have is, is this game worth my money? And to that I say yes. At a price of only $30, it is very worth it, even with the problems that this game has, and there are quite a few problems, but we'll get into that later. This game is fun, solo, as well as co-op. It has the in-game chat feature, so when loading in with randoms, you still can communicate, which is very important because this game is extremely teamwork-based. And the community, as of now, is really cool and really helpful. Everybody is still trying to learn how to play, what's the best way to play. So communicating with randoms isn't toxic yet. So you should have a pretty good time and a pretty easy time using the in-game chat. I really recommend the in-game chat feature. I've personally met some pretty cool players in the in-game chat. And we've had conversations about the game in general and different things like that. It's also a good way to meet people if you don't have a team to already play with. Because even though I said this game is fun solo... You do want a team that you can play in sync with. That is very important because if your team's not in sync, then people will be alerting guards on one side of the map and some somebody will be going to try to cap bases while other people is worried about trying to get the chest to the extraction and everybody will be all over the place and that spells disaster for your game easily. Now moving on from that, I want to talk about this game's visuals and graphics. And in my opinion, the visuals and the graphics are really good. It's far better than what they showed in the early game release footage and the previews as you're playing. I'm playing on the PS4 Pro as well. Now, mind you, it is a newer version, but I don't have the P5 updated graphics and I don't have the PC updated graphics. So, for it to look this good on the PS4 Pro is really saying something, is really a, a pro for this game. And I'm happy that it does look this good because I was pleasantly surprised when I seen how good this game looks. Now let's talk about the maps. The maps are really big and that's for good reason. When you are going for the chest or going for bases, when the chest is finally there at a extraction, the fact that the map is so big can keep a team away from you while you're extracting the chest for long enough for you to get it out of there or long enough for your team to set up. So y'all can defend well once the, the opposing team gets there. So the maps are really big and vast. And it, it makes for some interesting games because you never know where the sheriff is going to appear on the map. Or you never know where the vault is going to be exactly. The vault tends to spawn in, in some of the same places I realized. But because there are five different maps right now on release, you'll never really get the same vault spawn because either you're playing on a different map from last, or if you do play on the same map as you did as the last, it may be in a different building. Or if it's in the same building, it could have spawned upstairs in your last game, and the next game it'll spawn downstairs in the dungeon. I really like the architecture of the buildings and of the maps in general. The high towers, the different ropes that you can make descend to climb up, and the different entrances. Sometimes there's like little sewer entrances. There's doors you can lock pick. They did a really good job with their map design, and I'm happy to see that they are adding a new map in the first season pass for free. And I'm happy to see if they add anything new, like any new ways of entry to get to the vault and the chest and things like that. That'll make for some really interesting gameplay. Now moving on to the gameplay. The gameplay is fun. I'll get to the cons of it later, but it heavily rewards stealth gameplay and, and heavily, heavily punish the gung-ho style just run and gun gameplay, especially with the NPCs that are patrolling the, each map. Even when you alert the NPCs, the other team is alerted of your location, basically. It shows you the character you're using is revealed on the, on the map, and it tells where you were when you alert it. So, basically, when you want to run stealth, because when you alert, you basically sell your team and their position. So, you really, really want to try to keep running stealth. They have a couple of different NPCs patrolling the map that you have to worry about. They have the sentries and the crossbowmen, which are the low-level 
types of enemies that they're pretty tough too, even though they're low level. So don't by any means think they're easy taking. They will kill you given the chance. And you also have the knights who are a bit stronger and harder to kill than the low level sentries and crossbowmen. But you don't really have to worry about them as long as you can sneak past and take them down stealthily. You don't want to take a head on fight with them because these NPCs are by no means like easy pickings. Like I said, they will kill you. They'll parry your attacks. They'll block your attacks. They'll let you waste your stamina. They'll do everything they can to make sure you die. So like I said, definitely use your stealth. But other than those NPCs, the big dog you have to worry about is the sheriff. The sheriff will steamroll any player on the map given a chance. If he grabs you, you're done. Just chalk it up, you're done. Unless a teammate has an ult and can stop him, which I haven't seen happen since I've been playing, you, you're my, you might as well chalk that up as an ill because he's going to he's gonna kill you, no questions about it. So, other than that, those are the only things you have to worry about. As long as you stay stealthy, stay out of sight, you're good to go. I will say this. The gods are pretty slow on the take when it comes to spotting characters. But once they are alerted, they will chase you until you kill them or they kill you or you somehow get out of sight again. But... You don't want to be running from those guards because they will run you into more guards. And before you know it, you'll have about seven or eight guards trying to kill you. And that's really not what you want. As well as other players coming to kill you. Because like I said, once you alert the guards, the other team is alerted to your location. Only your location. Not your full team's location unless you with your full team. But they are alerted to your location. So thirsty players will come and try to snatch that kill. So... Definitely, definitely, definitely try to stay stealthy. I cannot stress that enough. But moving on from the NPCs, I want to talk about the four playable characters we have on release. There will be more characters added down the road, and I'm really happy to know that. But right now, we only have my class, the Hunter, which is basically an assassin. You want to stay out of sight and get those stealth takedowns as much as possible. You do not want to take head-on fights. I'll get to that later. You have... Robin, the archer, that's pretty self-explanatory. You want to stay out of sight and get those headshots. You have John, the brawler slash tank. Now, John is a tank's tank. He has sticky bombs, regular bombs. His ult is him just, he doesn't lose any stamina. And he takes reduced damage. So, he, if you like to play tank in games, he is your main. You definitely want to use John. And last but not least, definitely not least, is Took. Took is a mystic by definition on this game. I don't know how to explain him any other way in like lameness terms because he has healing abilities as well as support abilities. And he's pretty tanky as well. So he's, he's basically your jack of all trades character really. And if you are having a hard time playing other characters on this game... I recommend playing Took because you will you will get a, a definitely difficulty lowering when you choose Took. He is the easiest player to play in my opinion, and he's the hardest player to go against in my opinion. But now that I've talked about all the pros this game has, I want to get into the cons, and there are quite a few cons, like I said. When it so, talking about melee, when it comes to melee, certain matchups you don't want to take. Of course, you don't want to be an assassin or an archer fighting a tank. You don't want that. But sometimes you can win those battles. But because the melee is a bit wonky, sometimes hit detection doesn't work. I don't know if it's due to lag or what, but sometimes hit detection is really bad in this game. You can try to hit a, a player and you will immediately miss. As well as, for some reason... The heavy characters are faster than the light characters when it comes to attacks. And it's really confusing. <laughs> it's really confusing to me. Because the heavy characters shouldn't be as fast as an assassin. But the assassin and the archer have no lights. The Took and John, the heavy characters, they have lights and heavy attacks that they can use. But the assassin and the robin, they either have... The assassin has her crossbow that she can use, I guess in place of a light attack 
but that's really, really punishing, especially with John's lunge attack. And the Robin has his arrows he can use in place of a light. But like I said, it's really, really punishing widening up that arrow or that crossbow when you got a John who can smash the ground and stun lock you or in or two who in two hits who has really good range who in two hits can kill you instantly as a John or a Robin. If, if you make one mistake against those players, you're done. And so for the for the hit detection to be wonky, it, it's really not acceptable for this game. They have to fix that. Um, sometimes the take the stealth takedown prompt takes a while to pop up, and that is really punishing in a in a match, especially a heated match when both of you guys are on the went trying to get to the get it to the, the extraction, and you can't get your takedowns because of lag or whatever the reason may be. I've seen it. My friends have seen it. Some people say they haven't seen it. Maybe they're not as laggy or playing people as laggy yet that's why they haven't seen it or maybe they just haven't noticed it because it was so small and they're using a character that can make up for it but if using a character who can't really make up for that then you're basically dead each and every time so that is the cause when it comes to the melee combat a lot of people compare this game to for honor but the for honor melee is far better than this game so there's not really a comparison it's really more like assassin's creed when it comes to online melee, so, but yeah, like, my main concern is the uh, uh, stealth takedowns, the stealth takedowns, the prompt sometimes just doesn't work, or it takes too long to pop up, and by the time it pops up, the character's already turned around, you cannot get that stealth takedown, if you're me, an assassin going against a John, he's just gonna bash your head <laughs> with his hammer, and you're done, simple as that, so, that is my problem is with the melee. Lag is also a problem for me. This game is pretty laggy sometimes. Sometimes certain things that should work don't work. Sometimes NPCs are dead, but it still looks like they're alive. Sometimes they're not there, but it looks like they're there. But that's very rare when that happens, but it does happen. I would like that to be fixed. Um... A friend of mine who plays John and Tuke say that their block and parry is too easy to break and, and sometimes too hard to do, which I agree with. Going against John's, I have broke their blocks just by using my crossbows alone, and it drains their stamina really fast. So that, that can be buffed a bit, but with how much damage they do, that buff might make them even harder to fight than they already are, which is good as long as other characters get a buff. The stamina system is is pretty lackluster to say the least. You, it's no reason you should, as a lighter character, should have the same amount of stamina as a heavy character or lose your stamina faster than a heavy character. I believe that Assassin and Robin should have more stamina because they rely heavily on dodges instead of blocks or parries they rely very heavily on dodging and you lose stamina on attack as well so if you spent about what five seconds of, of, of your matchup dodging and then you go to swing and now your stamina bar is drained there's nothing you could do especially if another character comes into the fight you'll die especially if you don't have any help so a two a 2v1 on this game is practically unwinnable. So I, I believe they should buff some of the stamina or, or make the stamina drain a little bit lighter. Like, buff stamina for certain classes and make stamina drain a little lighter. They do have perks that, that do buff certain things, but the perks, a lot of the perks are <laughs> not very good. So moving on to the next thing. They definitely need to add more perks into this game. I know more perks will come with new characters, but the characters we have now definitely need more perks. I will say that. The waiting times in the lobbies are really, really, really long sometimes. Now, I don't think that's on the game because this game does has, have cross-play with PC and Xbox, I believe. I just think this game doesn't have as big as a following as they would like for it to have. So you can send them to a lobby from anywhere between 
10 to 15 minutes, maybe even more, waiting for a match. But other than that, that's probably all the cons I have for this game. It's just some, the melee is my biggest concern. They, they have to work on their melee. Sometimes, sometimes when the stealth takedowns are going on, your character will be taking the <laughs> one character down, but they're not, the character that they're killing is on, on another side of the map or something while you're doing it, and it just looks pretty stupid. So I would like for them to fix that, of course. But other than that, that's all I have. Just It's just a lag, melee, the stamina, and that's about it. Everything else is really good. For $30, this is a really good game. Yes, you can say it is repetitive because the game mode is simple and to the point every time you do the same thing every time but because you are going against four other real players who are doing different things every match is different i will give it that every match is different it hasn't of course it felt a little repetitive but it hasn't felt like too repetitive yet because it's a different way to win every time it's a different way to get the chest every time so it's not really that repetitive so don't let anyone tell you that it is a repetitive game because they must not have played it enough. And that's my thoughts on that. And all in all, that's pretty much how I feel about the game. I feel like they can add a few more things to this game to make it shine as bright as it could. This game has a lot of potential, but right now the package we got is really good. As long as the updates stay frequent and we're not waiting months in between updates, then this game should be good to go. Let me know if you guys want me to do any tips and tricks videos. I will be coming with more and more and more commentator videos. Usually I, I upload no commentary gameplay. But I'll be doing... I'm trying to get into doing tips and tricks videos and update videos. So let me know if you guys need any tips and tricks for the Hunter class. I am a Hunter main. I can't help you with any other class really. But I can definitely help you with the Hunter class. So let me know in the comments below. Let me know in the comments below the problems you have or the things you like about this game. This game is really fun. I enjoy the community and I hope this game does get the updates it needs. I hope people hear it, what, what the community is saying. And they, I hope they take the feedback from the community because a lot of people have been airing their grievances about this game. So... Maybe if they're if they're a smart dev team, they they will take our feedback. The people who made this game are the people who made Crackdown Three, but they <laughs> but they also made some great games. So I, I I do believe in this dev team, and I do want people to give this game a chance. But if people don't purchase the game or purchase the season pass, then you know this game will just die before it really gets to where it should be i do not recommend buying paying the full 50 dollars for the season pass right now because really all you get in the season pass is a few cosmetics and things of that nature nothing really worth paying for the characters that are coming are free the map that is coming is free so that's a good thing so the season unless you want to just have i guess Unique cosmetics, the season pass is not really worth buying. But other than that, that's it for this video. If you watched it all the way through, I appreciate you. Um, let me know in the comments, like I said, anything you think about this game, good or bad. And I'll catch you guys.